Hey, how's it going? I'm back. Back by myself. But, and it's with me as well. Not here, it's not here. It's not locked up in the dungeon. Be tomorrow, we'll be back tomorrow. This is Saturday. So, I'm doing it on the day I'm uploading. I would normally do that anyway. Um, hope everybody's well. Everybody okay? I just had a workout here. So I thought I'd uh, have some here. While I'm warming down. Just uh, 380 calories in... 38 minutes, it's not bad. I can't, can't, I can't complain, I can't complain at that, but that'll do. It's, uh, that'll do here. So, uh, that was a nice little, just weights, no cardio there. I might, if the weather's, weather's shit, if you're in Telford, you'll, you'll know that. Um, so, if it's a bit clearer, you know, what time is it now? Yeah, if it's clearer in the next half an hour, then I'll go for a walk. Anyway, I hope you're all well, hope everybody's doing well, and enjoying this lockdown wherever you are in the world because i know i have got worldwide listeners i know who you are um oh what was i gonna say uh, yeah i was meant to mention something if you watch the longer one we did with me and i did it last week i was i was gonna say what i remembered afterwards i was gonna say what i watched that cheered me up i was watching um some of you may know, some of you may not know. He's a stand-up comedian. He's an American stand-up comedian called Bill Burr. And I do like listening to his podcasts because uh, he does like a rant. But it always makes me laugh. Um, but he's, he's, he's a special. I watched it before and I was like, it was good. But then I didn't really, I don't think I took it all in. But I watched it again. And it's really funny. It's called Paper Tiger. It's on Netflix. Paper Tiger. Bill Burr, yeah. He, he recorded it in London, actually. He's, um, he recorded it at the... I can't remember. One of the... Uh, it's like Symphony Hall or something like that. I'm not sure. But one of them, anyway, he recorded it here. But he, he's, he's got good takes on stuff. Like his take on um, the film with Kevin Hart and... Was it, I think it was called Unbreakable. Kevin Hart and Brian Cranston off of Breaking Bad, Breaking Bad and Malcolm in the Middle. Um, his take on that was really funny about actors. But yeah, that was a... Uh, yeah, he, but he's a funny guy. So that's a uh, thing stand-up comedy generally cheers me up. Even if it's, if it's good, I'll watch it again. Even though I know the jokes, I still make me laugh because they always do. I mean, the amount of times I've watched, uh, I think we and Ant have talked about it before Eddie Murphy's Raw and Delirious. It's ridiculous because I mean, I watched it when I was probably not old enough to watch it, and uh, so yeah, I mean, it, I think he released that in 83, 84, and I watched it when I was about I was probably about 12, 11, 12. It's definitely an 18. Them jokes are all outlandish, but it was so funny. Me and my mates just cracked up at it. And the amount of times I watched it over and over and over again, it was a uh, and to the point where I knew it off by heart. But yeah, it's um, that always cheers me up, whether it cheer you up or not. But uh, yeah, there's all sorts of things I watch because <sighs> in these times you need cheering up. So I hope I cheer people up and um, things to I have to find distractions to cheer me up as well. So I just said to somebody earlier that I need to keep myself occupied to stop me thinking. You start thinking, and then you're like. Oh, you go, you spiral. You can either, sometimes it'll take you to some nice places, but sometimes, I mean, in times like this when you don't see anybody, it takes you to funny places. So, yeah, so try, try so I do workouts and I do things like that to, uh, to, to challenge me. Because it's, a, it's an interesting thing that uh, I heard that somebody was saying about back in, not the day, like, even uh, as, as times progressed, things have got, Life has been made easier, technology has made things easier, and you know, as you do, you, you make things easier for people after you. And um, to the point where we don't have that many things to challenge us, so we have to like, create these challenges for ourselves, we have to create these situations for ourselves. Um, the only the reason I'm well, I'm, I'm sort of waffling on around it, but uh, what I'm getting to the point of is that. Because people were so occupied with what the, what the challenges that they had, they didn't have time to sit down and think about things that they didn't like. You know, just to, they didn't have time to clear. You know, those things cleared their minds, so you know they're always ready for action. Whereas we have took more time to think, and there's thinking, which is a good thing, and then there's thinking that the negativity. And uh, what I found, what, what you know, what 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 I'm getting to the point of. Eventually, I'll get there. I will get there. A point. 
is that we have we we, we, we have, I think we need to create these challenges for ourselves. We have to create these uphill struggle. We have to create a struggle. And how I create my struggle, and how a lot of people create their struggle, is through working out. Now you go, oh, you want to work out? All I'm saying is, I found after I've worked out, my head is clearer. I feel better. And um, obviously your body reacts to it as well with the endorphins and things like that. But it's just, I feel uh, my mind is, I have clearer thoughts. And um, I feel decluttered. It's like defragging your drive for your people who ever remember the days of defragging your drives. In your, on your PCs, um, it's like that, and that's what I work out just to make it clear. It clears the fog, let's say, and I, I think a lot more clear. I feel a lot better, and I feel great now. I feel great after that workout. It's just, uh, and it was like I say, it was only forty minutes, and I was all, yeah, that was good. That was enjoyable, and it was like I did groan a little bit throughout it because it hurt, and that's what it was meant to do. So it's a different thing. I just did it with that um, rusty barbell that I've got, <sighs> and it does the trick. But um, yes, so I've just. Find something to 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 challenge you. Challenge yourself. If, 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 even if it's a walk, you don't have to. Um, did I mention it on Ants with Ant? I can't remember about that Dave Goggins challenge. I think I did at the end of it. If you didn't know, it was like it's it's in March. I can't even get the date. It's he said it's forty. But Dave Goggins, Navy Seal, ultra marathon runner, all sorts of madness. If you look at his Instagram page, he's crazy. But he's one person that challenges himself and um he's due he, he did it last year he did it before as well and he it's it's a four in 48 challenge so every four hours you got to run four miles for 48 hours consecutively so say for instance you start at 8 a.m you run your four miles or, or walk whichever you do you know because eventually you're going to get to the point you're going to have to walk or if you're unless you're super fit but you can run a walk, but you've got to do your four miles within those four hours. So at eight o'clock, you do your first four miles. Then you've got the rest till 12 p.m. Then you do your next four miles. Then you've got your rest till 4 p.m. Then you do your next four miles. And then 8 p.m. And then 12, 12 p.m. Yeah, okay, 12 p.m. And then uh, 12 a.m. Sorry, then 4 a.m. And then 8 a.m. And then you do it again until you've done the 48. That at the beginning sounds okay but when you have to get up at midnight and go and do four miles and then you have to go again at four o'clock in the morning and it just sounds exhausting thinking about it so i'm like i'm mulling it over whether i'm doing it or not i don't know whether i'll be able to do it i don't know i mean i'll probably be able to do two sets of four miles i'll probably have to walk the rest i mean i can walk four miles i know that but it's the it's the time in between like four four uh four hours isn't a lot when you get sort of into the meat of it later on in the day so that'll be interesting so yeah i'll keep i'll keep you posted water see i'm good no, it's not vodka <laughs> but yeah um so yeah it's just like that so it's just um interesting interesting things there's a what have i been mulling over lately not a lot really i did um those, those of you know me, are, um, dad passed away in 99, 21 years ago this year. And I realised, like the other, I think it was yesterday or the day before, that next year in January will be 22 years. And that's how old I was when he passed away. So I, I, I'll have been the same amount of time with him as I, as I was without him, which is a crazy, crazy thought. And it's, it's it, it, it doesn't seem that long, but it does seem like a long time. So that's... Uh, I have been thinking about that. That's that's just a just a thought, and it uh, that, that long. It doesn't seem like it's been a long time, but it's uh, it's uh, it's one of those. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm sure it will come to me later on. I do deal with this a lot better than I used to. I wouldn't I wouldn't have talked about it if I if I uh, if I couldn't deal with it. Um, to a, and to me looking at me looking at my own image in the camera. Um, but yeah, that's a uh, that's quite a. A profound thought not that i've forgotten him I, know, I, I remember and people remind me so it's a it's it's just a thought just wrapping my head around it that's what so i've just mentioned it again now i'm just thinking about it i'll think about it later <sighs> what else what else has been going on in the world not a lot really is there the news i'm just trying to keep still avoiding the news i don't want to know the news 
Um, no, I'm not avoiding it. I'll look at what needs to be looked at. We've extended lockdown to March 8th. Um, vaccine stuff is going on. Um, cases are up like they always have been. What was interesting was um, there's this Facebook group, um, the Corona Resilience Network or something like that, Shropshire because of Corona Resilience Network. They, um, one of their founders passed away from coronavirus. It was in the paper. I saw read it in the shop store. I read it in. Um, I saw another article. Um, so one of the founders of that group, who are anti everything to do with this, um, everything's a conspiracy. Um, they. So he passed away from COVID, I think last month. It was in January, I think it was, and um, they still deny it. They still think it's uh, and they the family have accepted what accepted it and da 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 da. da. But the, the 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 people people who knew him people are part of this group are pushing or contacting the family to say that they want to, they want an autop they they need to get an autopsy done to find out the exact cause of death because they don't believe it. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You can't do anything, can you? For some people, it doesn't matter. It can hit you in the face square, and you're you're still deny you got punched. Um, no, it wasn't. I don't believe you. It was a fucking alien. It's crazy. But yeah, so there's there's that kind of madness going on in the world. Um, India, that's a bit of craziness going on. If you um, so it's on the BBC website as well. There, the for, the farmer protest is still going on. Uh, I think they're six months deep now. Um, there's a lot of um, biased media coverage from what I've seen. Um, yeah, there's not a lot of um, I'm biased in terms of anti the protest and making them out to be. Um, I mean, you could say I'm being biased because um, I would support the farmers' protest rather than this is the thing I thought I had re actually in relation to that. So, one of the narratives that was pushed early on in this uh, in this protest was that the 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 farmers were um, uneducated, so they don't know what they're talking about about the laws. So I mean, these these are educated people have you know thought about, it, looked at it, and designed these laws to to be fair and blah 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 blah. But these the farmers don't aren't uneducated and they've been led along the path by other people with other political or nefarious interests, let's say, and um, they don't know what they're talking about. They they you know what they are. <laughs> this is the thing about the whole thing I've got about staying in your lane. Now I don't I profess I don't know anything about farming. I profess I don't know anything about the laws. Yeah, there's lots of other educated people that could teach me those things, and I would listen to, I would happily listen to them. Right. So to call somebody, so you're talking, these are generational farmers. These are taught by their parents, the grandparents. And you know, it's gone throughout the generations of they've all, that's all they've done. They, they've passed it on to their kid, they've passed it on to the kid, passed it on to the kid. So that, that's in their blood from when they were children. So when they were, sort of able to walk even if before they were able to walk they would have been gone with going with their parents to the farms they learned from the ground they learned how to farm so in my mind they are doctors in what they do they are fully educated in farming they are f way more than the people who wrote the law in the same way the people who wrote those laws or you know the political advice they studied their that's their lane that's your lane i'm, I'm cool with that that's your lane but then don't tell me that those people are uneducated when they know a to Z, Z to A, everything they need to know about farming. This is the business that they've done since they were children. This is what they've grown up with. This is what they've ate, drank and slept and bled for, for their life. So don't tell me that those people are uneducated. You stay in your lane and just respect the fact that they... Oh, I just, <laughs> just gobbed a bit then. I think it was a bit of water. Respect the fact that they... Um, they know what they're talking about in terms of their field. That's their field. They're, they're doctors, they're professors, they're buddy consultants in their field. If you ask them anything about that farming and the business of farming that they do, they know what they're talking about. Now, to insult them by saying that they're uneducated, you lose your, for my, in my eyes, you lose your argument because you're just, you're just basically insulting them. You're just trying to insult If you start insulting somebody, you've lost your argument. Yeah, you know, I don't want to listen to you anymore because you're, you're not giving me anything. So that's where I stand with that. So I do support the farmers. But I I would say 
to get your view on it, you should read up about it. Because you should. Because <laughs> you shouldn't listen to me because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I just have my own points that I like to make. Even if they're not points, they're just me saying stuff. But yeah, anyway. So, I've gone longer this time, 15 minutes. Um, Just because I felt like chatting. I just felt like a chat. Nobody to talk to. Nobody talks to me in the dungeon. Nobody wants to talk to me. I've had a few phone calls. Here. I've had a few phone calls this week. It's been nice. It's not even... I saw a friend. I saw Leslie. Ah, Leslie. She's from boot camp. Um, I just saw her in the Aldi car park. So and her, her and her husband. So I had a quick two minute chat with her. Which was nice to talk to. Nice to talk to another human that I know. Um, and my mate phoned earlier. And I, what did I call him? Oh, because he was he couldn't hear me. Um, he couldn't hear me speaking, and he was saying, "You sound like." So I, I, I said I'd call him back if he heard me, and then I messaged him saying, "You sounded like you were gobbling on a cock." <laughs> oh, I love my mates, my brothers. They are. It's amazing what you can say to some people, and uh, they just come back with some other shit, which he did, and I can't remember what he said, but I'll, I'll, it'll make me laugh. Yeah, that's the thing to find find things that make you smile um yeah uh body positivity that's an interesting one um and the person who i'm talking to knows what i'm talking about because we, we constantly talk about this so that person is um in a happy way in a good way and really happy where they are at the moment yeah that's good and that's where you need to be you need to be happy where you are and the, the, the progress progress that you're on. Now, um, it's always turned around on me and you should be. I should be what I want to be. Don't tell me how I should feel. I'll feel like I want to feel. All right. Um, I am. Um, people, when I'm down, when I'm talking, I'm down on myself. I'm not down on myself where I've achieved. I know what I've achieved. I've achieved uh, a shitload. And just by, I'll look at old photos and go, fuck me. And I was saying that that purse, that Dell, would love to be this Dell, where I am at the moment. But then me now, no, I've got more to get and more to gain. Not weight wise, but you know, in terms of progress. Um, so, although I am happy where I am, it's hard for me to articulate this in a message. So that's why I'm saying it. Although I'm happy where I am, I am fantastic. I do look at myself in the mirror and go, fucking hell, you've done all right, mate. But... There's more of my journey and there's more of my path that I need to to get to where I'll be happier. Whether I'll be I'll be happier than I am now. But I'm using my hands here like you can see. I'm happier than I am now, but well whether I will be then thinking that's it, I'm content. Uh, that's the point I want to get to is I'm content with where I am now. But at the moment, that seems quite far. That's that's where I am. That's what it is. So I know I've done well, and I know I'm doing well. I know I'm, I know just by my um, my stamina and my strength and my um, just certain parts of my body definition is I know it's it's good. Even my face, I've got a jaw. Um, shout out to Leanne who remember I remember saying, "Look, you've got a jawline." She was drunk at the time. You've got a jawline and everything. She said it like that as well. Uh, probably a bit more slurred. And um, but I have, and I didn't have that before. And I look at my old photos, like round moon face. Fucking moon face, yeah. Um, somebody called me chubby. I was never chubby. I was fucking chubby, but I was I was a massive chubby chubster. I was, uh, yeah. I can show you some photos. It's just these pop photos that pop up on my um, on my Facebook memories and stuff like that. I look at them, and go, whoa! I haven't got that shirt anymore. I've I've still got some of my old clothes. I gotta keep them as a reminder. I know I'll put them on every so often. Going, aha! Look at that. I need to get rid of some as well, in fairness. I'm slowly getting rid of them. But um, some of them I'm keeping. They will be a constant reminder of where I was and where I don't want to return to. Um, and that's for me. That's not for anybody else. That's for me. Um, that that I don't want to return to. You be what you want to be like. I mean, I'm just saying, just be healthy. Be healthy. Especially with the in times of corona when obesity is like one of the markers for um, catching. It's just keep eating vitamins. Um, eat healthy, keep yourself fit, and eating healthy doesn't isn't a case of restrictive diets. It's a case of eat reasonably. You know, if you're gonna have, if you want to have a bloody 
McDonald's every so often, that's fine. But then if you're going to have a McDonald's every fucking day, then, you know, they're gonna, it's going to cause you some problems. It's, it's pretty, some of it's pretty obvious, um, and it's small changes. You make small changes, you see small differences, and then you make bigger changes, you see bigger differences, and you keep on doing them, and you'll go, oh, wow, look at that. Three months ago, I was like that, and now look at me. I, I'm a different, different, different person, different body, my clothes are hanging off me, all that shit. So, you know, it's worth... Uh, Investing in yourself, and you don't have to join a gym or do you can, like, most of my stuff. Most of my stuff in lockdown, obviously, the gyms are closed. I, I, I cancelled my gym membership because the gyms were closed, and I just worked at home. And in fairness, I got down to the lowest weight I remember having. Like, remember, I mean, I don't know what my weight was when I was in, like, in my teens and stuff like that. I can't remember weighing myself. Or you just do with the scales. We used to do this. My uncles taught me this thing. See, see, I'm digressing again. My uncle's told me this thing about grip, um, you know, the dial scales. Um, when you, uh, you know the dial scales, not the digital ones at the end there. And um, they work with pressure, obviously, because scales all work with pressure. Oh, but, but anyway, the dial scales. So they would go, grip it, and, and we'll see how how strong your grip is. And this is why I've got, why when I squeeze hands, these are the things that I was taught by my uncles. These are my mum's brothers, um, who were savages, um, kabaddi players, uh, especially the one of them. Um, he 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 would go. You do it now, and he would make me like you know. Go, and then it was one of those things. I'm gonna try and get better, more, 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 more. And I mean, I think I could grip both hands. When there's different techniques, both hands grip. I think I could get up to the last time I remember was like 13, 14 stone. A squeeze. But then if you um, grabbed it from the top, so your hands were over the top of it, and then you you um, got the scale into your arms there and squeezed. Yeah, I could get, I could dial it all the way around, get it over 20, I think it finished 22 stone, I could get it past 22, it's probably like 27, 26, 27. But yeah, but that's my, my forearm strength. My forearm, there's two things my forearm strength came from, and it's not what you're thinking, you dirty bastards. Um, was uh, that, doing the grip strength on the scales, and um, my uncle was always able to, I always saw Bruce Lee doing it, my uncle was always able to crack his fingers, um, like that. I don't know if you can hear that. I don't do it as much anymore, see? Oh, wait, anyway. And so I wanted to do that. So I was always doing that. And that, what that does, it just... Because when you're gripping, it just starts toughening up your forearm. And then one day, I thought, what the hell's happened here? Where did they, they come from? And that was all just doing all that shit. Squeezing. You know, the, the pliers things that you can get squeezed. That's what they're for, your forearms. That's where you get... But that's where your grip strength... Grip strength, my grip strength came from that. Not that, you dirty people. Not that you shouldn't do that. You should do that if you want to do that. Be happy to do that. Everybody should do that, you know. I think you're more for Wall Street. Was it Matthew McConaughey says he does it twice a day? <laughs> but yeah, um But yes, that's uh that's stories from my childhood. Um there's a couple of stories that are coming up. I don't know whether I'm gonna do them with Ant or whether I'm gonna do them on my solo. I'll talk to him about that, whether he want where he wants me to do them. Um so there's the house fire story. That, these are true stories from my child. I'm bringing going over true stories from my child. There's the house fire story, and there's the um, the catching our friend story, which is funny. It's, uh, it's a funny story, and there's witnesses to that one as well. Um, it's true stories, hundred percent true stories, legendary stories, and a lot of people know about both of them. So it's not making up shit. Um, but only I can tell you about the house fire story. People have got their own uh, thoughts of what happened, but I only I know what happened because I set fire to the house. I'm not proud of that, by the way. I say it because it's a funny story, though, because it was so long ago. But um, but yeah, so they they will be coming up um, at some point in the future, hopefully uh, in the next few weeks. But uh, I'll just check out now. And it's been 25, it's 24 minutes with the intro. It'll be 25 probably. But anyway, it's lovely to talk to you. Much love to you all, much hugs to you all, and much kisses to you all. Good night.